There was also a revision. It's really kind of a, a text revision. And this is when required. Normal operation of electric equipment. It used to be referred to as normal operating conditions. And it was changed to normal operation of electrical equipment. Now, this is where you find the six conditions that define the normal operation of electric equipment. There's been a seventh condition that's been added to this. And that is that the equipment is rated for the available fault current. So what we had previously in 2021, it was referred to as normal operating condition. And we had the six conditions that had to be satisfied. The equipment is properly installed, properly maintained, used in accordance with the instructions. The doors are closed and secured. The covers are all in place and secured. And there's no evidence of impending failure. Now, this, you, you may or may not know this, this actually had its roots back in the 2009 edition of NFPA 70. And you might think, I don't remember that. What's 2009 have to do with this? Well, some of you may recall 2009, that edition, is when the definition to arc flash hazard was changed. It used to be the arc flash hazard was defined as when you have exposed, energized conductors or circuit parts. And in 2009 was the addition referring to interaction. If you're interacting with equipment in such a way that could possibly create an arc flash, I kind of paraphrased it. And, and that really set off a lot of confusion because interaction, what do you mean? So like, for example, if I just have a simple switch like this, that's interaction. Did that mean there's a possible arc flash hazard? Actually, in 2009, yes. And this really caused some confusion. So in 2015, the first attempt at something like we have here was created. And if you're just going to operate the equipment, let's have a checklist. If you can check all six boxes, then yeah, okay, go ahead and operate the equipment. That is what it is designed for. Well, now... There are some changes to it, and this is part of 110.2, electrically safe work condition, B, when required exception number one. The new addition was that the equipment is rated for the available fault current. So, for example, if you have equipment that has a certain interrupting rating, National Electrical Code requires that the equipment has to have an adequate interrupting rating, and now you see that in NFPA 70E. It doesn't specifically state, the National Electrical Code requirement doesn't specifically state that you have to perform a short circuit study, but it kind of implies that you do, to verify that the equipment has an adequate interrupting rating. So carrying this over to the conditions, we have a seventh condition now, you may be thinking, why is that such an important issue? Because picture this. So you have your device, you checked all six boxes, and uh, you're getting ready to operate it. Well, if the devices do not have an adequate interrupting rating, what if you energize it and there's a fault somewhere downstream from here and the fault current flows through this device and you're right in front of it and the equipment's not adequate, what would happen? Well, it could be a catastrophic failure and you're right there. So this seventh item was added that when you're checking the boxes, someone has to assure that the device has an adequate interrupting rating. The fault currents vary all over the place because it's based upon voltages and system impedances and transformer impedances, conductor impedances. It's based on so much data. And the available fault current, it is going to be different at each equipment location. This is part of what drives the incident energy calculations in an arc flash study. You have the clearing time, how long it takes a device to operate, but you also have the magnitude of fault current that goes into this.